Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Buenos dias. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. We hope you all had wonderful holidays with your family, and uh, we're looking forward to a good new year. Uh, I am. Anyway. Oops. I got the dog on my lap. I just bothered her. <laughs> he he slaps <clears throat> a little bit because he's being held down by a small furry creature. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So before we get into what our plans for this year are and what we're doing now, we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to take a step back and take a look at our last adventure of 2021, which was a mind salt mine tour. Yes, the grave. Something that I wasn't, I really wasn't, um, I don't know, I can't say impressed. I was impressed, but I just wasn't thrilled about it. It was scary to me. <laughs> if you are at all claustrophobic or just generally don't enjoy going underground, this is definitely not the tour for you. Yep. And the couple that we went with, Alex and Jeannie, Alex and I were ready to get out of there about the time we stepped into the elevator. <laughs> they did good, though. Yeah. So, and we're going to warn you, this is a very dark segment. <clears throat> yeah, very dark. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Go 650 feet underground on our hoist here. There's a bit of air rushing up from below through the crack. That is return air from the mine. Uh, so you can go and step on. Just watch your footstep. Any loose fitting clothing, hold that down. No dresses. <coughs> no Marilyn Monroe moment. <laughs> As we're going down, you're going to feel a pressure building in your ears just to her swallow. That should go away. Um, now, as we're going down, it is going to get dark. Um, I'll turn my light off for just a minute on the way down so you can experience it. Now, we are going 650 feet. That's about two football fields, two statues of liberty, so we're St. Louis Earth plus 20 feet straight down in the earth. Now, we are actually in the up shaft for the air exiting the mine. Uh, for half of the air supply, so that's why the air is kind of rushing around the hoist. That was something. And you are now 650 feet underground. Welcome to the mine. These lines right here are the markers of where the salt mine used to be, how high up the mine went. You can see here is the six foot mark from the 1920s and 30s. And then up higher, way up there, they finally hit the 10 foot mark in the 1940s and 50s. Oh, 
touch the ceiling there. Everything that comes down in the mine stays in the mine. And if you look at the lit area, you'll see that this is even true of mining trash. But also, can now skip the whole machine they use. Here's where we get to stop and collect our own little piece of salt. Got our souvenir. Uh, did we tell you we're 600 and some odd feet below? Yes. Six feet is all they bury you. Well, guess what? <laughs> hey, at least you'd be well preserved down here. Oh, yeah. Right? So we survived the mine tour. Yeah, we did. Alex and I were ready to get out of there. We weren't waiting around for these two. <laughs> as soon as we got done with the little train ride, both of them were beating feet back to the elevator. Oh, yeah. We were gone. I wasn't waiting for them. Matter of fact, we got to the door and was beating on it. But anyway, <laughs> come on, let us go. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. It was great, though. Yeah. So... This all took part while we were at the National HDT Rally. It was right at the end. In Hutchinson, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And before we left the rally, um, this really great couple, they have Compass RV Inspection, and um, they did a seminar on the importance of fluid testing. So while we were there, they were pulling samples for people um, at the rally. So while we were there, we decided against our better judgment to go ahead and have an oil sample taken. No, there was no we about it. <laughs> I figured if there was a problem, I wanted to know. <gasps> and I'm, I'm the type that says, uh, you know what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, I hate to say that she was right. <laughs> she was right. So before we go on, if anybody out there is interested, if you need a pre-purchase uh, inspection of an RV or you're interested in having your samples taken, I'm going to link their business information in the description. That's where they're not paying us to do this. I just, we want to put it out there for anyone who's interested. Um, but we did get the results back about the time we got back to Arkansas. Yeah. All right, today we're running into town, run some errands, and we have Grace's oil sample that we had pulled downloaded on here so we're going to stop by the diesel mechanic in town have him read it and see what he thinks we're looking at for repairs got just a little bit of coolant and the oil not good so we're going to keep our fingers crossed that it isn't going to be too severe or too expensive to fix and hope that he can give us some good info based on our sample that we have so wish us luck we're off to town. So after talking to the mechanic, he didn't seem initially too concerned about it. The amount of coolant we had in the oil was what he called minuscule. And he said that that in and of itself pointed to a problem some, some ways down the road, but not at this particular moment. He wasn't too worried about it. Right. Should we? I don't know. <laughs> don't know. I really don't know. But it doesn't end there. No, it doesn't end there. <laughs> So we decided to go ahead before we got back on the road and take Grace in and have him give it, give the truck its annual service. And when he got in there to do the service, he called us up. We got a problem. You have oil 
in the water. That leads to two things. Either water cooler or oil cooler, or you've got a head gasket going bad. So we ran down to the shop to talk to him about it and see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he pulled a piece of straw and dipped it in our oil reservoir. No. Or not, sorry, our coolant reservoir. Yeah, and our coolant reservoir is a metal tank about yay big, about so, you know, and it sits on the firewall. And I've got a sight glass on it. That's all I got is a little bitty glass about that big. And he took this piece of grass about yay long and dipped it into the top where you fill the coolant. And it came back and it was oil. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked like he had just dunked it into the oil. oil. <laughs> yeah. So, we left Grace there. Yeah. And he had he had a, um, a diagnostic, whatever you call him, guy coming down to check out a couple of his trucks that he owns. And he said, I'll just have him go ahead and check that one while he's at it. Just kind of a double check on his original diagnosis of the problem. Yeah. he was, Like I said, he was thinking it was either the oil cooler or the gasket. And this fella that came down to look at his trucks, he was 85 to 95% sure it was the oil cooler. So that's where we started. Mm -hmm. That was the easier place yeah. to begin. So, normally... He would do our repairs yeah. on the truck. But to replace the oil cooler, the entire turbo has to come off. And it's also kind of overlapped with the IGR cooler. EGR. EGR. With the EGR cooler. So it was a little more complicated than what we normally do. So we went ahead and had him go ahead and fix it. Yeah. Yep. And we waited. And we waited. Because, <laughs> yeah. I had taken it in at the beginning of the month, pretty close to 8th, I think, maybe the 9th, somewhere around there. I said, we got to have it back by the 20th. The 20th, we're getting back on the road. We're going down to Houston and have Thanksgiving with my sister. Ah, no problem. <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah. <laughs> the 20th came and, nah, we ain't going to have your truck done for another week. We're waiting on too much stuff. Now, I know this great <sighs> kung flu crap has slowed everything down. really don't know why. It doesn't have anything to do with COVID. And I'm going to go on a rant, so I better shut up. So he was waiting on parts. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get them. He was particularly having trouble with gaskets and O-rings. Yeah. And uh, we found out from another truck center later on, which you will hear about at a later time, that that actually is the case. They're having a lot of trouble getting gaskets and O-rings right now. Yeah. So that really delayed us getting the truck back. And if you're a if you're a big shop, you might have that stockpile. But if you're a small shop, you don't want to have that stuff just laying around. Right. So you just order it when you need it. Mm -hmm. And he is. He's a small shop in a small town. Yeah. So um, he did the absolute best he could for us with what he had to work with. Yep. And so then uh, finally, after we had uh, gone to his sister's for Thanksgiving and come back, and we finally got the call saying the truck was ready. Well, today's the day, <laughs> we think. <laughs> it was supposed to be done this morning. It was supposed to be done yesterday. Actually, it was supposed to be done a week and a half ago. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he said we could pick Grace up after 2.30 today. So we're going to run into town and do some errands and get propane and get the truck and then hopefully be on the road. If not tonight, then first thing tomorrow morning. It'll most likely be first thing in the morning. Yay, there she is sitting back there. Now for the truly scary part of this whole operation. This is always the scary part. We'll go find out what the bill is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're going to be so glad to have her back. Yeah. 
We will. I will. And then as if all this wasn't fun enough, one more little fun thing we had to deal with um, it was when we were taking the truck in uh, for the service. Uh, stopped and got diesel. And uh, everything was fine. Filled it up. Turned it on. Engine light comes on. And I'm looking around, looking around at the gauges. No oil pressure. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. All of a sudden, just like that. It had to be a sensor going out. So I shut it off, looked around. I didn't see any oil anywhere. Turned it back on, no oil pressure. And I'm like, okay, we're only a couple of blocks away. I'm going to just close my eyes and go for it, you know? And it, and the computer didn't shut the truck down. No. Um, and he, like he said, the, the mechanic was like literally catty corner across the highway yeah. from where we had pulled in so we had very short distance to go yeah we got there he did the service and they called i called him up and just say hey how's it going and he's like well we got everything going but we got your oil pressure figured out the oil filter was spun two turns off <laughs> so it was loose and it was just sucking air and wasn't making pressure so it's i don't know it was just I don't know what happened. We don't why know, it came loose. Right. We don't know if it just rattled loose over time with the vibration of the roads and everything. Um, or the last service had been done at Peterbilt. We don't know if maybe they just didn't tighten it up quite enough. But luckily that was an easy fix. Yeah. Stuff wears out and comes loose over time, I guess. And mm -hmm. But it's all fixed now. It's no different than us. O-rings get loose and <laughs> stuff starts leaking, you know. <laughs> It's a little personal, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she's all ready for the road. And uh, we're going to be heading west. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some great stuff coming up. Uh, spending a little time in Texas. Not as much as we had originally planned, but still going to do some fun things there. And to wrap it up... The big question from our last video, did the drone survive? Yes, about 95% of it survived. Um, we did everything we could. We took it out, took the battery out, pardon me. The battery shot, that battery is shot, but I pulled the battery out, shook enough water as I could out, took it home. Our best bet would have been what 90 or 95 percent alcohol mm -hmm. just submerge it in that i know that sounds really stupid but submerge it in that and it dries it takes the water with it mm -hmm. um we watched a couple of we watched a whole bunch of drone rescue videos yeah. and that was what they suggested yep so now <clears throat> it it works it reads low voltage every now and then and some people say it's the connections where the battery slides in. So they say it's that. It could be a little gummed up or, you know, you got to just scrape it off. But five times out of ten flying the thing, it says the UEI. I don't know, something that makes it fly. I have to recalibrate that almost every time I fly it. So, But, but it survived. Yep. We are flying it and we're getting good footage from it. So we will continue to use it until it finally completely gives it up and dies. Yeah. Yep. Or until somebody buys me a new one. Right. And we could. We could get a new one and keep that one for parts. <laughs> Shameless beggar. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> One last thing, we'd like to give a shout out to Midlife Journey, mm -hmm. Chris and Barb. They are, I don't know how many subscribers they are. We'd like to see them get to a thousand subscribers. They're getting really close. So They are getting really close. And just give them a shout out. and Give them a subscribe. Yeah. 
help him hit that thousand thousand subscribers. That'd more. be really neat. It would be. It would be awesome to see. Chris and Barb, midnight mid life journey. Yep. All right, we'll catch y'all later. Bye.